What's going on everybody, Kwaku here, back with another video. Today I just want to do a quick video, or this is actually going to be a pretty long video, because we have a new build of Windows 11 in the dev channel, finally. It's been about two weeks or so since we've had a new build, and there is a ton to unpack here, so I'm just going to jump straight into it. Uh, Microsoft has a lot of new features in here. So basically, the touch gestures that I was talking about in the previous video of the leaks that came out from insiders on um, from some insider that Windows Central had about gestures to swipe up to open the start menu and then to swipe left and right between it uh, when it's open with your fingers if you have a touch device that exists in this build uh, the features of down here for the quick settings around here uh, you swipe up from this area the bottom right and swipe up and it'll bring up your uh, calendar and stuff um, also if you want to swipe in from the right side you can get to your notification center all of that stuff is in this build but the nicest feature overall that I really wanted and I had a lot of gripes about in the beginning and a lot of people had gripes about is drag and dropping in the taskbar down here. You might notice I have a new icon right here and it's because if I just add my desktop icons back on, you can see, let's say I want to add blue stacks to my taskbar like the good old days that you could do that. I can now drag it in and just fit it in anywhere. You see this right here? It The, the one thing I don't like, however, you know, and I'm going to say I don't like something about these things. Um, is that I don't know where when I'm dropping it in there should be a line or something like that that kind of tells me like where it's gonna fit and there's no line it's just kind of there it just says link so they should add some kind of cursor to tell you this is where it's gonna fit between these two apps other than that drop it in and it shows up it pops up from the bottom right there there's my recording thing and it works so we finally have drag and drop back it's been a while uh, not too long but it's been pretty pretty while um, since we've had that feature. So that's a good thing to come back to when you, especially when you're doing graphic design like I've been doing. Uh, that is back inside here. Now, another thing I wanted to say with this build is that with this build, uh, it's not coming to ARM, ARM64 PCs just yet. It'll come later on. Um, however, there's another nice thing that they have in this build here, and that is the ability to create folders inside your pinned apps here. So let's say I want to add I want to throw Edge with Photoshop Express because those are two things I don't use. Uh, I can throw them in and then when I click the folders, this is how the animation looks. It pops in nice and smooth. It's kind of weird looking at it because you see how the words get blurred for a while. Could just be my computer, but it works. I can put Solitaire in there, which is kind of too quick in my opinion. Like you see how I'm trying to do it. It's too quick, but you can put Solitaire in there and just add your folders. Now let's see if you can rename those folders. It looks like there's no renaming of folders here. So I guess another thing that I got to pin Microsoft on is, yes, you allowed us to add folders here, but there's still no renaming of that folder to tell you something. Because I don't mind if this icon gets smaller, just so I can add a name so it's in line with everything else, kind of like how on iOS and Android that you can do that. Also, another thing here, let me see if there's a way to create folders here. There is no way to create folders here. So that is still no longer a thing, but folder support is definitely wanted. Uh, or definitely appreciated. Another thing that I wanted to mention with this build too is that uh, they have that live caption thing that I was talking about in the previous uh, video that I just did this week. And what happens is up here, it takes up a section up here in this little zone up here, this whole top part of your screen. Um, so anything that's uh, using speech in the entire OS, you can even enable it so your microphone for calls even does that too. Um, will have a caption for it. So this is for accessibility or for whatever reason, but you can do that now. Now I'm not gonna show you it because I had to restart my computer once already because I couldn't get it to show up and I don't wanna have to restart the computer again uh, because you know, cause I, I could never have it go away. It kept on, it would pop up this, like this section would take over, but there was no way to exit out of it or do anything or even hit accept that you're supposed to do. So I'm not going to show you that, but I will show you the blog post, probably just pop up the blog post. If there is a picture on there, uh, to show you that now, another thing here in the notification pane here, uh, you do have, uh, the focus sessions now in your little calendar notification whatever this section is at this point the bottom right corner thing uh, so you can turn on focus sessions and set your timer for focus sessions and hit start with that um, without having to go through the hoops and ladders that you had to do pre previously to open up focus sessions you can even turn on do not disturb mode and stuff which you can see that do not disturb is on for me right now directly uh, from uh, your notification 
uh, or your action center. So that's pretty nice. Uh, so basically that allows it so that way uh, things don't just pop up on your screen when you're trying to just focus on other things. And no, I don't have focus sessions on, but I just keep doing not disturb mode on because I don't really like the notifications in Windows. Now with notifications, there is also a settings for notifications as well. Um, if you go to system on your settings and then you go down here to notifications, now it allows you to um, like, pick which notifications you want to keep on and pick which ones you want to keep off. You see I have the Google Play Store on there because that was a previous video that I did. But there's a whole bunch of things that you can do. This is even connected to your um, whatever device is connected to your phone. Certain apps, I guess, have support for it because that's definitely not uh, all the apps I have on my phone. So you can turn on notifications for those things, and that's pretty cool. Uh, keeping on going on, uh, yet yeah, we have live captions. Uh, we have uh, quick access um, on the File Explorer. It says here they're rolling out an update to File Explorer to access uh, for quick access view. First pin to quick access has been extended from only supporting folders to now showing uh, supporting files as well. So you can do that. That is in your start or uh, your File Explorer right there. In fact, let me pull up the blog post for you guys to see the bigger picture of it. So this is an example of quick access in um, File Explorer now supporting pin files as well. Um, as just other things um, so you can pin things so that way if you always visit the same files over and over again you can just pin those things there and every time you open up file explorer it'll pop up right in front of you to easily see it that's pretty good for someone like my mom who she may not know where she saved it so if she goes to her files she'll know that it's there if she pinned it that's pretty good if it can remember it um, another thing here is to see your onedrive storage in file explorer um, this didn't have work for me. Uh, I'm not sure why, like you see right here, this doesn't work for me. So I guess uh, if it works for you, it's there. And this is just what it looks like right there. It will be a little pop up there. I'm not sure if I have to send something to OneDrive in order to activate this or it's supposed to just be there. Or maybe it's being A and B tested as what we hate so much, but it's not there for me. Um, you can add to Feedback Hub if you want, um, but it is not there for me. Uh, another thing, though, that I did want to mention, uh, other because the touch gestures I already mentioned, is uh, now you, if you notice that my folders here, the downloads, fluent, video, and not, not this one, but just these three, they show a preview of files that are in the folder on the icon itself now. This is something that I know a lot of you guys wanted for a while now, and it is there finally. So you can just, without having to click on it, you can kind of glance at what's inside the folder i'm not sure how what how it knows what takes priority um to show but it's there and that's a nicety another nicety just to add and these are the touch gestures right there where you swipe left and right you swipe up from the uh, middle bottom uh, swipe up from that section there to pull up your quick quick action settings your notification center from the right to the middle um and then they have a full screen gripper. It says for touch oriented full screen apps like Tall Solitaire, you'll notice a gripper. If you swipe from the edges of the screen, which is this thing right here, you'll see there it is. This thing right here, which will help you um, do different functions with it, which is pretty nice. Um, to help you keep your app, uh, if you accidentally swipe near the edges, it won't just like t disappear your app. Um, keep it on going down. Now we also have improving snap layouts. It says there's a new way to snap in windows and it's with snap layout so basically if i take this thing right here this window and i go towards the top you notice this thing pops up you see that you see that when i move away it's trying to show up so if i hold it let's see if it shows up no if i start moving to the top get closer boom snap layouts right there and i can pick a different snap layouts that i want to do let's say i want the web browser full and then because I picked that, it knows I want to fill in different things. So I want to fill in File Explorer there. And I don't want Streamlabs OBS. You can scroll through it too. I want system notifications there. Now I got all three things there. Or I can just full screen that and it just works. So that's another thing. It seems like they're just stealing this from like Power Toys or something like that with their fancy zones. But in my opinion, this is an easier addition to it. Because people will probably discover it on accident and then stick with it. Um, this here is for more of you laptop users. I do not use a laptop for these videos, but it is uh, a feature that will be coming. Um, so they have more detailed power settings, power usage levels. You can see uh, how you use your laptop and how you can conserve your energy, carbon emissions and all that stuff like that. Um, so that's pretty nice. You got improvements to browsing and edge with narrator. Um, it's pretty straightforward. They made it simpler to use overall. And then the big one, too, that I made a video on in the past because it was kind of leaked or it was kind of a hidden feature that was leaked. 
and that is the new task manager. Now, I don't really like this task manager that much because I'm used to the old one, I'm old school, but this is the new task manager right there. And by default, these are all closed right here. And this is how it looks like. You just have icons and this and that. And if you click this, it expands. And it looks it, it looks pretty nice. If I go to performance, I'm recording and doing a lot of stuff. It looks pretty nice, but um, it definitely will take getting used to because we're so used to having all the tabs for these things up above, like actual tabs, and not these little side tabs here, these vertical tabs. So that's something to take, get used to. But I do like the scroll bars. It is nice and fluent. It is nice looking. The whole application is much nicer looking, uh, but and it supports dark mode. It's not going to blare in your eyes. You still have your resource monitor and stuff. But these icons are going to take getting used to, unfortunately. And, you know, we'll have to deal with it. We'll see how we deal with it. Obviously, you still have these eco mode icons there, too. Uh, going through, I'm not going to go through the PowerShell stuff. I'm just going to go through to see what's there. I told you about drag and drop. Uh, they have some more features for teams. Um, it says that are to share any window from the taskbar. We've had new visual indication that you that it's being shared. So I guess now you can see like, hey, edge is being edge canary is being shared. It'll be highlighted around with a darker red, and so on. Um, and then different, even another uh, little mini update uh, for those of you who have different color gamuts or color uh, profiles for your PC, which I do not. You can now add a quick setting. Um, in your quick settings bar right here. And you can now just say, hey, I want to add uh, a new color uh, profile section there. So that way all you do is click it and you can change your color profile to vivid or whatever you wanna do. Uh, more things, there's so many things I told you packed in this thing. Uh, it says when casting from your PC, the cast icon will appear at the lower uh, lower left corner of your taskbar uh, to show you are casting. I think they meant, um, to the lower right because this doesn't make any sense it's at the lower right of your taskbar left left will be that uh that news and interest thing that's being a and b tested right now um that everyone has over there uh but no this is this is at the right this is not at the left so i think they need to fix that blog post they need to get a spell checker and then i told you about the show well your file explorer is showing uh, previews of items already in the folders um, they're doing more integration with OneDrive uh, integration. If you use OneDrive desktop, I do not, so I can't show it to you. But read this if you do follow that. Uh, windowing says they updated Snap Group visuals to, in to include desktop wallpaper to make it easier to differentiate groups from normal windows, so you can see your different Snap Groups and like that. And it just kind of looks better, in my opinion, easier to describe and like to show. And these are mainly for power users, and most normal people will never do this. They'll just literally make something full screen, minimized, or just barely take up uh, that much space. It says they updated the transition animation that goes from one snap window state to another. Um, so now if I do this right here, and I believe it is Windows key left and right, yep. So you can see this is the animation now. Boom. So that, that's kind of what they're talking about right there. I don't, I don't. I don't know about that whole stretching thing, but that's kind of what they're talking about there. And now they're saying even uh, the rotations of your device, if you use a gyroscope on your device, like a Surface Book, um, it should be more snappy. Um, there's a whole lot of stuff. Reduce notification sounds that play when you connect and disconnect docks and monitors. Narrator has a new male voice called Guy because that's that's a thing, you know? Um, they have voice typing things. Voice access has a bunch of new features in it. I can't show this entire thing. And this one other thing that I really did want to mention because this looks very important here it is uh, they're expanding dynamic refresh rate or DRR experiences with laptops with 120 hertz displays beyond smooth scrolling in office and low latency. So when you move your cursor, the system will now boost to 120 hertz, making it feel more responsive. I think this is a feature that is in the Surface laptops. Um, but it's not in other computers. And so I'll, I'll definitely, when I update my razor blade, I'll try that out because it does have a 144 hertz um, display um, and it is a laptop. My monitor here that I'm using is also 144 hertz. So, but it's not a laptop, so I guess it won't work. But I'll try it out and see what happens. Maybe I'll put a little mini community post just to tell you guys what's happening. Uh, going through more, you got some more keyboard options for, I believe, Kanji or uh, no, Pinion. Um, so, there's a bunch of stuff there. And now we also have a little bit more emojis that have a little bit more depth to it. Um, so they've updated that. I think it's Windows Key V. 
uh, yep, Windows key V to open up emoji picker. And so you can see there before, this is how um, some of these icons look like, this, the face with a crying thing on there. Uh, let's see if I have something similar to that here. Yep, it's right there. So it was updated. It's not being A and B tested. Um, it was updated on build 2254, which is in fact this build right here, or this build is 22557, but it was updated on 22554. Um, going through more, there's just a whole bunch of things here just baked in. It says aligning with Hyper-V behavior. If you're not in full screen mode with Windows Sandbox, uh, modifier keys can now be in intercepted by Windows Sandbox. Um, and there's a whole lot more. Another thing too, I told you in the previous video, um, the classic Windows apps like Run now have a mica material on their, I guess, I forgot what you call it, the title bar. I forgot what you call it, but yeah, their title bar, that's what they call it. So if I type in Windows key R and it brings up the Run command, you probably remember this screenshot, this picture, or this Run box from the previous video. Now you see it looks different now. It looks, it looks better now. So, um, Updating it more in line with the design style of Windows 11, which is another always welcome in my opinion. Um, and a whole bunch of fixes as usual. Um, I'm just trying to see one thing. This is kind of a first look. I haven't really dug too deep into this just yet. I just want to see, uh, nope, nothing there for the file, file explorer problem or the file, yeah, explorer problem. So other than that, there's a whole lot here um, to unpack here. Um, and then obviously the final thing here, they're just trying to say um, another feature um, for your phone with those of us with Samsung devices, you can enjoy more continuity if you move your phone to your PC, as you move your phone to your PC. Um, it says with this edition, you can easily access recently used apps from your Android on your Windows PC, access the most recent apps uh, with certain these certain Android devices here. It says the Z Fold, says you will be able to use this with select Samsung devices here. So going through, it says it is available on select Samsung devices that have linked to Windows with one UI 3.1.1 or higher and linked to Windows service 2.3 or higher, such as Z Fold, uh, Z Flip, Note Series, S Series. I have the Z Fold 3, so I, I don't know if they're meaning the Z Fold series or not and the Z Flip series or not. But as usual, there's a whole lot of things in this build. I don't want to do a 20 minute video on it because there's a lot, um, but there's a whole lot. You see how long this blog post is, is a lot. Um, and then the final thing I guess to take away from this is that um, right here, we've, mu we've moved from RS pre-release to NI release. Um, and that is a branch that says here, going forward, they will no longer be noting when these branches changes occur. And you can see how uh, they release things on the dev channel with this blog post if you want to read more into that. So there's a whole, whole lot. I'm not going to go through all of it. Th you'd be here for an hour. Um, but that's a lot of the things, a good amount of the things that you probably need to know about this latest build of Windows 11 uh, dev channel build 22557. Um, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope this was insightful so you didn't have to read the whole blog post. Now you can only read what you need to read. And uh, I'll catch you guys in the next one tomorrow. Um, I do have a video still coming tomorrow. Who knows what time? It's been really busy here, but I will definitely have a video tomorrow. So take care.